हरे कृष्णा सो ऑल द कैंडिडेट्स फॉर इनिशिएशन गॉट द हेड शेव्ड एंड इट्स नॉट ओनली जस्ट गेटिंग द हेड शेव्ड गेटिंग द हेड शेव्ड विथ ए सीखा आई वॉज नोटिसिंग सम ऑफ यू have your head shaved but don't have a sikha you know what it means to not have a sikha to be shaved head and not having a sikha means a mayavadi so do you want to be a mayavadi is there any so be careful huh like uh, you may feel that uh shaving head is in vogue it's a fad now it's becoming a fad it's becoming a fashion but not keeping a sikha looks kind of odd to keep a sikha looks like you are a hare krishna uh, but that is our identity mm. you know in the early days if somebody did something very grievous then the punishment was his sikha was shaved up right maharaj yes <laughs> so you can well imagine you know what was proper standard you <clears throat> don't say something maharaj <laughs> okay <laughs> so <laughs> and also this sikha has some very special significance one significance of sikha is propat said that krishna grabs you by the sikha and pulls you to the spiritual sky <laughs> and another meaning of the sikha indicates that's from shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur that sikha means chaitanya shiksha those who have accepted chaitanya mahaprabhu's teachings they will keep sikha the literal meaning of the word shikha means flame the flame of transcendental knowledge mm -hmm. so these are all the significance and uh, shaving the head also is very important because the hair is like antennas mm -hmm. with antennas you receive uh, the electric messages electronic messages and more head more hair means more diverted the activities of the mind too many thoughts but in krishna consciousness what do we need to do we have to concentrate we have to focus so that's why Uh, the sikha and the transcendental antenna and <clears throat> always make it a point to wear tilak mm. because these are our this this is our uniform shaved head sikha kanthi mala tilak and the advantage is that when you are wearing all these then jamadutas won't come near you jamraj actually told jamadutas don't go near those individuals who are wearing tilak and kanthi mala mm. so it's a very scientific process so this process has to be properly observed and then only will make spiritual advancement take this hmm, sp take your spiritual life in krishna consciousness very very seriously it's an inconceivable opportunity inconceivable good fortune that shri chaitanya mahaprabhu has created for us jay radha madhava कुंज बिहारी 
जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जाना बल्ला गिरिवर धारी जय गोपी जन बल्ला गिरिवर धारी जशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन जशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन जमुना तीर बन जमुना तीर बन जय राधा माधव कुंज विहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज विहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे नित्य गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बो जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्रज कचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद अभय चरणार बिंदु भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद की जाए 
अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जाए नामाचार जशिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जाए प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवाशदि गौर भक्त वृंद की जाए श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरि गोवर्धन की जाए श्री वृंदावन धाम की जाए श्री मथुरा धाम की जाए श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जाए श्री मायापुर नवदीप धाम की जाए गंगा माई की जाए जमुना माई की जाए भक्ति देवी की जाए तुलसी महारानी की जाए हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाए शमोबे तो भक्त वृंद की जाए गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द एसेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द एसेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द एसेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरंगो All glories to Śrīla Prabhupāda. Namo Om Vishnu Padāya Krishna Prashthāya Bhūtale Śrīmate Bhakti Vedānta Swāmī Niti Nāmine Namaste Śarashrati Deve Gauravāni Pracharine Nirviśe Navādi Paschatta Dishatārine Śrīla Prabhupāda Ki Jai Hare Krishna So today I'll just speak on the significance of initiation and His Holiness Devamrita Swami Maharaj will speak on the ten offenses and the, the importance of the Holy Name. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> the word initiation literally this word in English means beginning. Beginning, it's actually the beginning of spiritual life. The Sanskrit word for initiation is Diksha. This word Diksha is a combination of two words taken from two concepts. One concept is Divvagyan, the transcendental knowledge the D from Dibvagyan and by receiving Dibvagyan the sinful reactions become eradicated, kshai, eliminated. So Dibvagyan and kshai, Dibvagyanang yato daddat kurjat papasya shankshayam tasmat dikshete shaprakta deshikoi tattako vidai this is being signified through this verse by receiving transcendental knowledge one becomes free from sinful reactions so those who are learned they identify this process as diksha so <clears throat> the Transcendental knowledge is actually manifest. Transcendental knowledge manifests through mantra. You remember Brahma at the beginning was bewildered. He didn't know what to do. And then he received the transcendental sound vibration from Krishna in the form of first Omkar, then Omkar manifested into Gayatri. And then Brahma meditated on Gayatri and as a result of that, the transcendental knowledge was revealed in the heart of Brahma. Tene Brahmarida Adikavaye Muihanti Jatsurayaha This transcendental knowledge was revealed in the heart of Brahma. So material knowledge is acquired by sense perception. We see, we hear, we touch and we get the knowledge. But that's not the case with the spiritual knowledge. The spiritual knowledge is revealed in the heart. As we chant every day, Divvagyan, Ride Prakashita, the transcendental knowledge is revealed in the heart. 
and the process is meditating on the mantra, chanting of the mantra. So these mantras are kept as a secret previously. The only way one could get the mantra is by getting it from a bona fide spiritual master who has the mantra, who had the mantra. So that was the only way to receive mantra. Mm. Therefore, the initiation was the only process through which one could receive the mantra and as a result of getting the mantra and meditating upon that, one could get the transcendental knowledge. But in this age, uh, something unusual happened to that process. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and what to speak of mantra, he gave the Maha Mantra and made it available to anyone and everyone. Therefore, with the Har Father Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, there is no consideration of, uh, of receiving it through Diksha. Mahaprabhu made it available. Mm. And in Chaitanya Charitamrita, it has actually mentioned that this holy name of Krishna doesn't depend upon Diksha ceremony. Mm. Diksha Purascharja Vidhi Apekshana Kari. The holy name, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This Hare Krishna Mahamantra doesn't apekshana kare. Apekshana kare means it doesn't rely on or depend upon receiving it through the process of diksha. Other ages it was. Unless one got the diksha, there was no question of receiving mantra. But in this age, Mahaprabhu actually made some a uh, special arrangement and that arrangement is Maha Mantra has been given to everybody irrespective of any co consideration of qualification. Mm. So then the question arises then why is the initiation? Mm. Why is initiation in receiving the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra? Because mm, there is another consideration of Diksha. And that consideration is Diksha Kale Shishya Kare Atma Samarpan. At the time of initiation, a disciple surrenders himself. Atma Samarpan. Sheikale Krishna Tare Kare Atma Samo. At that time, Krishna accepts him. Hmm. The candidate, the disciple, surrenders to the spiritual master who is Krishna's representative and through that representative Krishna accepts that shishya or candidate who is willing to accept the process of shashan. Shashan means Shashan, uh, Shashan means chastisement. So when you are surrendering, you have to be prepared to accept chastisement. Mm. Not just Guru should, all, Guru will always chastise you for no rhyme or reason. The point is, when you make a mistake, then it is the responsibility of the spiritual master to correct you and that correction is uh, Shashan. Shishya, the word Shishya means the one who is, who is prepared to accept chastisement. Hmm. So that means surrender. So disciple surrenders to the spiritual master and Krishna accepts him at that time. So it is because of this purpose Srila Prabhupada introduced this initiation for the holy Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Mm. This is also another, uh, like, uh, another mm, special arrangement that Srila Prabhupada made in ISKCON. So, <clears throat> now, mm, the process is, like, although you have received the Hare Krishna Mahamantra already, actually, uh, 
one needs to be needs to be initiated in order to get the mantra but in iskon what is the standard in order to get initiation one has to chant hari krishna maha mantra 16 rounds every day for certain period of time see the difference huh? in other ages you couldn't get the mantra without being initiated but in this age especially in iskon in order to get initiation you have to chant the mantra for so many months or year and <clears throat> that is huh? because shri chaitanya mahaprabhu made the hari krishna maha mantra available to anyone and everyone but there is a consideration also just just chanting the holy name is not enough the chanting the holy name should be free from offenses the holy name is krishna himself abhinnata nama namina the name krishna and nami the supreme personality of godhead are non different krishna and his holy name are non different jai naam shai krishna the name krishna and krishna himself non different the name that means the name krishna is krishna himself but as long as there is offenses then the holy name doesn't become krishna mm. so in that way uh, chanting has three considerations uh, offensive chanting mm, clearing chanting and pure chanting when you are chanting with offenses then it is not the holy name it is just the syllables coming out the sound coming out the still material sound syllables are coming out but then uh, the holy name uh, becomes chanting becomes free from offenses mm. that's clearing stage and the pure chanting when uh, is free from mm, offenses it becomes pure chanting so in it has been described in the clearing stage holy name is so powerful that just in clearing stage one achieves liberation one achieves liberation just by chanting the holy name in the clearing stage example ajamil ajamil didn't chant the holy name indicating krishna the name narayan indicating krishna he chanted the name identifying his son calling out his son whose name happened to be narayan but that chanting became was free from offenses hmm. therefore it became nama bhash although indicated someone else but because it was not with offenses hmm, he didn't chant offenses offensively and that's why uh, it became nam abhash and as a result of that ajamil became free from all his sinful reactions and that's why the vishnu duta immediately came there and then pure chanting huh? pure chanting gives krishna prem love for krishna and that is the ultimate goal of life so this is how powerful this holy name is just by chanting the holy name purely Uh, we can achieve krishna prem therefore krishna prem and holy name has been considered to be synonymous nam prem through the nam one gets prem to krishna so chaitanya mahaprabhu special arrangement is that he gave the holy name in order to give krishna prem namo mahavadannaya krishna prema pradayate pradayate he is distributing krishna prem how just by giving the holy name to everyone so just consider what a precious object it is and chaitanya mahaprabhu gave it he distributed it all over india but he predicted that this chanting of the holy name will spread all over the world in every town and village 
And in order to make it happen, he sent Srila Prabhupada. And that's why today, uh, even in Port Royal, uh, we are receiving the opportunity to take advantage of this holy name. And it will spread. Today it spread all over the world, no doubt about that. But it didn't reach every town and village. And it will happen. The words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can never go in vain. So recognize that you are getting an, a, a priceless uh, object. That's what has been described in Brihad Bhagavatamrita. I noticed many of you bought Brihad Bhagavatamrita yesterday. And in the second part you will see, when the Gop Kumar received the mantra from his Guru, his Guru actually told him that treat this as the most precious object. I am giving you the most precious object. So treat it accordingly and it will fulfill all your desires. And it will take you to the ultimate goal of your life. Mm, that is how precious it is. And there are other examples also. Like there was a consideration, what is the value of the holy name? What's the value of practicing of devotional service, process of devotional service? Devotional service is represented by a, just one tulasi leaf. So one tulasi leaf was on the one side of the balance and they started to put all the wealth of this world. The entire wealth of all this world was put in the other side of the balance. Which side were heavier? The tulasi, that's the, that's the value of the holy name. Uh, you can take all the wealth of this universe, this world, still it will not match the holy name. Because what the holy name gives is from the spiritual world. And not only from the spiritual world, it's the most, most precious, most exalted object of the spiritual world. And that is what this holy name is. That's what the devotional service is. Practicing all the processes that have been described in the Vedas uh, through six different branches of philosophy, it has been described uh, step by step, karma kanda, jnana kanda. Then finally, where does it come to? Hmm? Bhakti. So bhakti is the highest spiritual object. Bhakti is the highest spiritual achievement. In other ages they have to gradually climb those ladders and come to the topmost region of bhakti. But in this age Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave it uh, irrespective of our qualification. So this is the inconceivable good fortune that we have received in this age. And Srila Prabhupada made it available to all of us. So consider yourself to be very, very fortunate that you got this opportunity. And take full advantage of it. Surrender, as I mentioned, surrender is the very foundation of devotional service. Sharanagati. Surrender is the uh, very foundation of devotional life. Shikhaya Sharanagati. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching the process of Sharanagati, Bhakatera Pran, which is the life and soul of devotion. So accept this process of surrender, just surrender. Krishna is also telling in Bhagavad Gita. After telling all, giving all these instructions, what is Krishna telling finally? Sarva dharman paritajya mamekam sharanam braja. So remember that this is, the, this is the point when you are coming to surrender yourself to Krishna. 
and uh, remain fixed up in this process and in order for us to secure our spiritual life Srila Prabhupada made such a wonderful arrangement through ISKCON mm. that's why I always make you take a vow also that you'll never leave ISKCON uh, never leave ISKCON why? Uh, because I know if you stay in ISKCON your spiritual life will be safe if you leave ISKCON who knows what may happen? Most likely you lose your spiritual life. I have seen so many devotees who are apparently so fixed up. When the left is gone, the spiritual life gradually diminished and disappeared. So never take that risk. Uh, always remain in ISKCON. This, this institution of ISKCON will not only protect your spiritual life, will guide you in the path of your spiritual progress. And the advantage of, hmm, what is the greatest advantage of remaining ISKCON, remaining in ISKCON surrounded by the devotees? At the time of death, you can rest assured, all the devotees will be there, chanting the holy name for you, reminding you of the importance of chanting the holy name. And this is how they'll create the good fortune for you. Make you leave your body remembering Krishna. And that's the ultimate goal of life. So no matter whatever happens, don't ever leave his gone. Mm. And although through this process of initiation, you are accepting your Guru, Diksha Guru, but always remember that your Diksha Guru is not the only Guru. Mm. There are so many Shiksha Gurus in Iskon. You are surrounded by so many, so many teachers, who are helping you in your spiritual progress. Mm. Starting from your temple authorities, mm. treat them as your guru. And then so many exalted devotees who are mm, always guiding you. You are so fortunate to have this exalted association of so many exalted devotees in ISKCON, wherever you go. Uh, so many sannyasis, so many exalted devotees. So surrender means surrendering to all of them, surrendering to the entire institution of ISKCON. Mm. Remain in ISKCON as a faithful, loyal follower. And always remember that Srila Prabhupada is there as your uh, preeminent Shiksha Guru. Our line is not a Diksha line. Our line is actually Shiksha line. Shiksha is more important. Diksha has its relevance. Diksha is important. But Shiksha is more important. For example, <coughs> Diksha can be compared to admission in an university. And Shiksha is attending the classes and learning the subject. What if you get admitted but don't attend the classes? Will you benefit? No. Mm. On the other hand, you can attend the classes as a guest student, not getting admitted uh, officially in the university, but you can learn. Mm. So, mm, and our, that's why our line is actually uh, Shiksha Parampara, which is actually Bhagavat Parampara. And in this parampara, in our line, Srila Prabhupada, as the founder Acharya, is the Acharya of every single devotee of Iskon. Srila Prabhupada is not the guru of only his disciples. Prabhupada is the guru of all the devotees of Iskon for all time. And that's why we had this paper, Prabhupada's position as a founder Acharya. And to, to institute that properly, we have started this disciple course. Mm, the purpose of the disciple course actually is to uh, recognize your relationship with your Srila Prabhupada, recognize the relationship with your spiritual masters and others in uh, relation to Srila Prabhupada and Iskon. So, mm, you are getting a wonderful opportunity, so take full advantage of this opportunity. Thank you all very much. 
Now I request His Holiness Devamrita Maharaj to speak. At this glorious occasion, let us consider how the initiation candidates are embarking on a lifetime, actually eternal career, in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra without offense. And those of us who are already recipients of initiation, we can use this occasion to strengthen our commitment. A lifetime career takes commitment, it takes perseverance. And for all of us, whether about to be initiated or already initiated, we need group support because the age of Kali is the time of forgetfulness. We're amidst an ocean of nescience and the general tendency of things in the material world is to run down. Krishna talks about this in Bhagavad Gita. Sakalenaha mahata yoganashta pralantapa. I spoke this knowledge before, but in the course of time, due to the way the material world works, the meaning of Bhagavad Gita became lost. That doesn't mean the verses became lost, but the actual clear purport became obscured, and therefore Krishna came and spoken again. So we need to be aware of the corroding effect of the material energy. We're situated in material bodies. We're situated within the material world. It's not a innocent circumstance. Things are happening. Maya is dynamic. The illusory energy of Krishna has two subdivisions, throwing and covering. That illusory energy can suddenly or gradually jump you and then it covers you over. What will keep us safe in the society of devotees? First of all, we need, as His Holiness Bhakti True Maharaj explained, we need that society of devotees as a support group. Anyone who's serious about any kind of endeavor, material or spiritual, always has a support group, always has a team. A successful individual operates within a support group, within a team. And so the wonderful thing about the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, Prabhupada's mission, is that it, it strives to give you support in offenseless chanting. That goal of offenseless chanting may seem so far beyond us. But when we consider that by taking initiation, we're enrolling in the Academy of the Holy Name. We're formally enrolling. As we heard, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains that the Holy Name does not wait for initiation to act. As soon as a tongue touches the Holy Name, there is some kind of transformation. But to get the full benefit of chanting, we want to formally enroll in the academy. We need all the mercy we can get. Because our lifetime mission, which we should strive for every day, is to chant without offenses. By chanting with offenses, there will be some progress, but the progress will be slow. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that actually all the offenses can be avoided simply by striving to chant attentively. So it is that particular offense, chanting without attention, chanting negligently, that I'd like to focus on today because it's the cornerstone of our spiritual development. 
It's the ignition switch. Once you start paying attention, you take very seriously what you're paying attention to. Anyone can understand in relationships, if you become insensitive, if you don't listen to the other person, all kinds of other problems come. <laughs> Married men know this very well. <laughs> You've got to focus. <laughs> and of course, many of you have learned, you may be you may have been born in the USA, you may have been born in India or other places, but you know the popular terminology, you have to give quality time. <laughs> Certainly with chanting Hare Krishna, you have to commit day by day to quality time. Uh, because certainly uh, the, the holy name is the supreme person. Nama Chintamani Krishna Jaitanya Rasa Vigraha. Rasa Vigraha, the form of all loving exchanges with Krishna. What you pay attention to will become most prominent in your life. So I've been meditating many years on this instruction from Srila Bhakti Thakur, how all the other offenses can be avoided simply by being attentive. Rupa Goswami explains in Upadesha Amrita, Shat Krishna Nama Charitari, Pitopya Vidya, Pitopatasya Rasanasya Narochikanu. What is the symptom of our material disease. It is feeling lethargy, feeling like chanting is a chore. It's an exercise like calisthenics you have to do in order to keep fit, even though you don't like to do it. I know I'm supposed to do certain back exercises every day, and I always put it off. No, 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 not today. <laughs> but after a while, if, if I continue neglecting, I get a reaction. And I know, I actually know, I have to confess, that if I would do the back exercises every day, that's the best thing. But so busy. <laughs> Similarly, we all know as devotees, that if we would actually chant Hare Krishna with attention every day, that's the best thing. We all know that. But, right? <laughs> so busy. Not simply householders, sannyasis too. We're so busy traveling here and there, this flight, that flight, journeying to the airport, traffic, so much email. Conference calls, this, on and on and it goes. But if you keep your core commitment, strive to keep your core commitment, you'll see dramatic changes in your spiritual life. And you won't fall victim to the other offenses because you're focusing on Krishna's name. And what you pay attention to, you're very careful about. You treat it like a jewel. And indeed, the holy name of Krishna is like a jewel. Nama Chintamani Krishna. Touchstone. But I can speak just a little bit more about one offense that creeps subtly in. But of course, we expect the initiates to know the ten offenses. But consider this, chanting Hare Krishna for material benefit. Sometimes I'm approached by devotees going to university. And especially if they're studying psychology. And in a mood of outreach, they ask me, what about presenting the Hare Krishna mantra as stress relief, as, uh, as a relaxer? So I explain, you have to be very careful about this. There's a better way how to do it. Yes, you can say, 
the Hare Krishna mantra relieves stress. But what is the cause of the stress? <laughs> the cause of the stress is thinking you're the body, and you're thinking you're the body because you've forgotten the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So you have to, it's not that you can't present the Hare Krishna mantra as relief for stress and anxiety, but you have to be very sensitive and careful how you do it because you're dealing with Krishna. Just like if someone asks you about someone so dear to you, someone who's in an intimate relationship with you, someone asks you, or you want to explain to others about that person, you're very careful. It's a very sensitive matter. You will say something, but you're very careful what you say. I remember one story Srila Prabhupada told about this particular offense, chanting for material benefit. No doubt His Holiness Bhakti Chumaraj remembers it better than I. There was some kind of drought in Calcutta and Babaji's were leading Hari Nam Sankirtan parties house to house in Calcutta. You remember that story? Yes, was it drought or famine? Famine, yes, thank you. Caused by the British. Caused, yes, by the British. <laughs> mm. <laughs> was it Churchill or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Okay, since this came up, like um, it was in 1942, the British were trying to force the Indians to join the British Army, but the Indians are not responding. So they created this famine by burning all the crop and storing all the things from the market. So there was no food and thou millions of people actually died due to that. Yeah. Yes, please. So Srila Prabhupada described how one Babaji organized Hari Nam Sankirtan parties throughout the city. And to cure the situation. So you would say, well, Hari Nam, wonderful, it, it solves all problems. And Prabhupada remembers the Hari Nam party coming to his house. And it's after the, all the chanting parties throughout the city of Calcutta made their rounds, the situation was relieved. But Srila Prabhupada said, this is offensive chanting. Yes, your situation will be relieved, but it's not what you should approach Krishna for. Very high, exalted, yet practical point. We want to chant for Krishna's pleasure. We want to chant for engagement in Krishna's service. Naturally, if you chant attentively and try to hear what you're chanting, the pure nature of the holy name will inspire you more and more in pure devotional service. So again, we're back to chanting with attention. It's our lifetime commitment. Sometimes we have our ups and downs. Sometimes we have our peaks and our valleys. But we need to maintain that commitment to properly honor and then will relish the holy name. There are two stages, roughly speaking, generally speaking, in chanting. There's the therapeutic or recovery stage <laughs> in which we're chanting, although the, ma the full taste is not there. Sometimes we feel unattracted to the unlimitedly attractive holy name. Rupa Goswami explains that feeling of unattraction is due to nescience. Our tongue, you can consider your tongue is coated with the illusory energy and therefore the natural sweetness of the holy name is not tasted by you. But that's an unnatural situation. So Rupa Goswami advocates, he gives the therapy when you're in the therapeutic stage, you need therapy in order to recover. So Rupa Goswami says, simply by chanting with attention these sweet names, the natural spiritual relish will awaken. So we shouldn't be discouraged by our 
feelings of inertia, our feelings of mm, unattraction. Take the medicine, and then you move from the therapeutic stage to the relishing stage. Someone was asking His Holiness Bhakti Chumaraj about the development of the higher stages in bhakti, the revival of your original loving connection with Krishna. That's all in the relishing stage. It comes naturally. There's no need, as Maharaj explained, for any artificial striving, artificial contortions. Have full faith in the holy name, especially when chanted with the support group within the support, the team of the Society of Devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna.